Hi guys, well, hello, welcome to another Sky Blue Simulations instructional video. Sky Blue here, and for this video, we'll be covering a few supplementary procedures regarding engine start. Specifically, engine start with an air start unit, cross bleed engine start, manual engine start, one engine taxi on departure, and arrival. This video is more of a review for me than it is, is an instructional video. But if you do learn something from this video, then that's good. For the purpose of this video, we'll be using this Phoenix Airbus A320 and Microsoft Flight Simulator. These procedures may also work on other Airbus A320 series add-ons and other simulator. For example, the Tolis A321 and A319 in X-Plane, and I assume the FS Labs in P3D is also capable of doing these procedures as well, as well as other similar add-ons provided it is modeled by the developer. Now, while we'll try to be standard as possible with these procedures, remember that set procedures are modified to account for the limitations of the sim and as a single pilot. Therefore, do not attempt to use this video as reference for real life flying. Always consult your training or your company's manuals documents or an appropriate flight instructor. This is purely for entertainment for you to enjoy in your preferred PC flight simulator for more immersion and for a more realistic experience. With all that said, let's start off with the first procedure. So first off, let's start with the engine start with an air start unit procedure, also known as the engine start with external pneumatic power. Why would you do this? While you normally would start the engines with the APU bleed air on, there will be times when you will be unable to do so, like having the APU inoperative. The air start unit introduces the required air for use in helping to start the engine. We'll do this procedure twice. We'll start both engines with the air start unit, and then the second time we'll be starting the second engine using a cross bleed engine start. So right now the scenario is that we've assumed to have completed our cockpit preparations, the cockpit preparation checklist, and that we have yet to get our startup clearance. With that said, let's get started. Okay, engine start with external pneumatic power. Before connecting external pneumatic power, pack one, off. Pack two, off. Packs are selected off to prevent any possible contamination of the packs by the external pneumatic power. APU bleed, off already. Engine one bleed, off. Engine two bleed, off. Cross bleed, open. External pneumatic power connection, request. Ground from cockpit, request to uh, connect the external pneumatic power, roger. So in the Phoenix, you'd go to mate, ground service, and then ground air will be set on. When cleared to start, so this is where we get our, uh, we, this is where we get our startup clearance. So it would say, uh, Frankfurt Apron, hello, Phoenix 320 at stand Victor 134, request startup. Startup approved, call for taxi. Startup approved, call for taxi, Phoenix 320. So startup approved. Our beacon light can go on. Window, check that it is closed and locked. Check that the slides are armed for the doors. Toast lever, idle and a uh, parking brake on. Okay, so continue with the procedure. When cleared to start, engine two, start. As necessary, engine one can also be started by using the external pneumatic power. If engine one is started first, check that the brake acupressure prior to engine start. Uh, the minimum recommended starter air supply pressure is 25 PSI when the start valve is open. Two external pneumatic power units may be used in parallel if necessary. Let's go ahead and start the engine then. Engine mode selector ignition. No amber crosses. Bleed air. Right side. Engine two master switch. On. It will start as uh, normal. So again, guys, for the purpose of uh, this video, we have not set up the FMC or anything. This is just to uh, give you guys a background, a quick look on the supplementary engine start procedures. So we'll wait for N2 to go to avail.
Engine 2 avail. After engine 2 is started, external power avail. External power disconnection request. Ground from cockpit, remove external power. Roger. Ground power is removed. If there's any ECAM actions, call it out. Okay, ECAM actions. Air, bleed to off. Clear air, clear L. Status, stop ECAM. Any checklist, resets, relights, no. Uh, continue ECAM. Status, landing distance procedure apply. So uh, we'll disregard all of these because we're uh, kind of busy doing another procedure, the external the, the engine start with the external pneumatic power procedure. So clear, st remove status, remove status. Ecom action is complete. All right. So the external electrical power can be removed after the second engine start. So for the purpose of this video, we've removed the uh, ground power now, but you can remove the ground power after the second engine. Okay, if external pneumatic power is used to start engine one, engine one start, engine one selector ignition, no amber crosses, bleeder on left side, engine one, master switch, on. Obviously, yes, the bleed two and bleed one will be off because uh, that's what the procedure calls for. So at this point, we can disregard uh, those ECAMs. We'll wait for engine one to become a veal. They want to weights, we don't need that. Engine 1 avail. When engine 1 is started, external pneumatic power removal request. The ground from cockpit, remove the external pneumatic power. Roger. It has been removed. Cross bleed. Auto. Engine 1 bleed. On. Engine 2 bleed. On. Pack 1. On. Pack 2. On. If the cross lead engine start procedure you used to start engine one, we'll do this in uh, just a bit. We'll finish this one first. And that's it. From there, uh, you do your after start flow as necessary. So engine mode selector norm, and then of course the APU bleed, APU, uh, they should be off, which they are. Uh, disarm, uh, arm ground spoilers, reset rotor trim, flaps, Set your trim and then TO config. Alright guys, so we'll do this again in a bit. The cross bleed uh, engine start procedure, which will happen after the engine 2 start from the air starter unit procedure. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Let me just set up the aircraft. Okay, so next up, we'll be doing the same procedure we just did except after starting the first engine, which is uh, engine number two, we'll be doing the cross bleed engine start procedure for the second engine. Why would we do this? So maybe the air starter unit will be used by another aircraft, or to save time, uh, you would push back first before starting the second engine, making it impractical to tow the air starter unit to the taxiway or wherever the aircraft is being pushed. So let's go ahead and continue. We continue the ex engine start with external pneumatic power, but then we branch off into the part where it says if the cross bleed engine start procedure is used to start engine one. External pneumatic power removal request. Graphic cockpit, remove external uh, pneumatic power. Roger. Pack one, on. Pack two, on. Engine two bleed, on. Cross bleed engine start procedure, apply. Cross bleed engine start. Do not perform the cross bleed engine start procedure during pushback. Simultaneous use of the engine bleed supply and external pneumatic power supply is prohibited. One engine must be running in order to supply air for the other engine start. Before second engine start, APU bleed off. 
already. The bleed valve is supplying engine reopens and the cross bleed valve closes. Engine B supplying engine on engine bleed receiving engine off. The bleed valve of receiving engine is closed to avoid reverse flow leakage. Cross bleed open. When cleared to start, area clear of obstacles confirm. The ground front cockpit will be doing a cross bleed engine start. Uh, might be a stronger uh, thrust from the engines. Are we clear? Any obstacles behind? None. Roger. And ensure increased power jet wake does not constitute any hazard to people or installation behind the aircraft. Thrust lever of supplying engine adjust for bleed pressure. Adjust thrust of supplying engine to obtain an engine bleed pressure of 30 psi before start initiation and at least 25 psi during the start sequence. And if the thrust required to obtain the appropriate engine bleed pressure exceeds 40% and 1, pay particular attention to the surrounding area. If the engine is armed, or rather it is a dual annular combustor, uh, combustion engine, preset 30% N1. So we can uh, make 30% N1 as a, a nice little target for us. But if you look at the PSI, the supplying, uh, the engines should get about 30 PSI at least. So 30%, is that enough? No. Let's uh, bring it up to 34 35, yeah, 35. 28, 28, okay. 36, maybe, 37. Yeah, 38, 39. All right, keep it at 39. So that's going to be, uh, yeah, very uh, nice. It won't exceed uh, 40%. And the receiving engine start. Apply the normal engine start procedure. So, engine mode selector ignition. No amber crosses, sufficient bleed air on the left side. Engine one, master switch on. So again, we have to keep it at 25 once it's starting. So we need to put more, we need to put more. 25, 25, at least 25 rather. 26, yeah, that's good. Engines are starting. Engine 1 avail. After start, thrust lever supplying engine idle. That would be engine 2. Cross bleed auto. Engine bleed receiving engine on. Pack 1 on. Pack 2 on. And that's it. That completes our cross bleed engine start procedure. The next procedure we'll be doing is the manual engine start procedure. We would do this after aborting a start due to engine stall, engine EGT over limit, or low start air pressure. We would also do this if we are expecting a start abort due to degraded bleed performance, hot conditions, or high altitude airfields, or all of them, or an engine with reduced EGT margin or marginal performance of the external pneumatic power group or an intermittent ECAM engine ignition fault alert during the first start of the day. Before we do this, let's discuss how to abort the engine start just in case. So first off, if during the manual engine start, if an engine start malfunction is expected or an engine related ECAM is triggered, the pallet flying must abort the start sequence in a way depending on the engine master lever position. So before the engine master lever position is on, uh, you just have to turn off the engine manual start push button switch, the guard switch over here at the overhead. 
Now, if if a malfunction happens after the engine master lever position is on, turn off the engine master lever position first and then turn off the engine manual start push button switch. The crew then should consider a dry crank cycle of the affected engine before performing another uh, start attempt, in which they should refer to the engine ventilation dry cranking supplementary procedure, which we won't be covering in this video. In case of an ECAM alert, the PF announces ECAM actions in line with the ECAM management philosophy. Let's now continue the manual engine start procedure. Okay, so during a manual engine start, yes, we have done that already. Thrust levers, idle. Okay, engine mode selector, norm, then ignition start. The lower ECAM displays the engine pitch. If both engines are started manually, the procedure applies one engine at a time. When all engine parameters except N1 and N2 are available on the upper ECAM display, uh, no amber cross displayed, well, we do have N1 and N2 anyway. Uh, engine manual start push button switch on. So we'll start engine two first. I'll walk you guys through what happens and the parameters. Start valve, check inline all pressure. Is it increasing? Yeah, increasing. N2 is also increasing. Checked. When N2 reaches the maximum motoring speed, 16% minimum or 20%, and 30 seconds after the selection of engine manual start push button switch, engine master on. It's kind of like a Boeing. You know, the 737, when it, when it goes to maximum motoring speed, uh, you do the fuel cutoff to um, the on position, or whatever it's called. And then you start the chrono as well. The PM starts the timing in order to monitor the light up duration. So igniters Alpha and Bravo are checked. Fuel flow increase is checked at 50% N2. The start line, start, yeah, start valve is a check cross line. Igniters Alpha and Bravo disappear. Check the main and the secondary engine parameters. Let's wait until avail. Let's also reset that. Engine 2 avail. Engine manual start push button switch off. Engine mode selector norm. When no other engine requires to be started manually, disregard. We still have one more. In that case, let's do the procedure again for engine 1. Engine mode selector norm, then ignition start. Parameters displayed. Engine manual start push button switch for number one on. Start valve check in line. All pressure increasing N2 increasing. When N2 reaches maximum motor speed, 16% minimum, 22%. Engine one master switch on. And start chrono. Igniters alpha and bravo are on. Fuel flow increase checked when n2 reaches uh, it depends if it's 43 percent or 50 percent depending on the aircraft igniters alpha and bravo at 50 percent let's see disappears start valve check cross line main engine parameters and secondary engine parameters check normal once the air engine one is stable so once it's normal we continue the procedure Engine 1, avail. Engine manual start push button switch, off. Engine 1 selector, norm. When no other engine requires to be started manually, SOP engine start, resume. So that means with engine mode selector to norm, you do your after start flow, APU bleed, and APU as required. Pilot monitoring will arm spoilers, set flaps, and uh, reset rudder trim, and then set flaps, and then set the trim, and the status of the aircraft is now normal. So manual engine start procedure complete.
Okay, next we will be doing the uh, one engine start procedure for departure and taxi. Uh, rather, we'll be doing the one engine taxi on departure and one engine taxi on arrival. So why would we do these? Primarily to save on fuel. You do these if you're anticipating a long taxi time, whether it be due to traffic congestion or that you'll be taxiing a long distance, especially if the place where you need to taxi is very far. So in this particular scenario, we're parked in Frankfurt Main Airport, the eastern part, and we need to taxi all the way to the west for departure, either runway uh, 07 center or runway 18. So before uh, you do this, consider the following factors. Uh, when you need to do the one engine taxi procedure you'll be using more thrust on one engine than normal so the crew must be careful to avoid blasting uh, debris so usually uh, you know you have these airports that have a uh, little space between the runway and you know the, the fence the boundary so uh, you know there might be some rocks or debris that could kick up uh, uh, that could uh, kick up from the engine exhaust the jet exhaust and it could go to any spectators it could uh, destroy property and maybe uh, harm lives potentially so be aware of that and uh, you'll be creating fuel imbalance because uh, you'll be using the uh, engine number one will be using the left tank so you need to monitor the uh, imbalance of course and uh, your aircraft may be too heavy to taxi so if we're going to be using engine one uh, we cannot make short turns, especially towards engine one. So this means that left turns are going to be harder, but right turns are easier. So let's say, uh, 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 here's a good situation. If you, if you, all you need to do to taxi to the runway are right turns, then sure, you can do it even if the aircraft is heavy. But if it's all going to be left turns, you're better off starting both engines uh, now uh, before you taxi. You also have environmental factors, um, airport factors. So consider any uphill taxiways. So if you're kind of unfamiliar with the airport, uh, you can start both engines straight away unless you know that you can conquer, you know, uh, the uphills of uh, any taxiways that you uh, may encounter. Also, if it's raining, you know, contaminated, if the taxiways are slippery, um, you might want to do both engines uh, instead. So, uh, again, if you're just taxiing on one engine, um, it's going to be hard to uh, turn left when taxiing. So, with all of these into account, let's start with a one engine taxi for departure. So, let's assume that we already have our start clearance. All right, so. All right, here we go. So one engine taxi at departure. Brake AccuPress, check. Of course, we need uh, parking brake, which is pressurized by the yellow uh, hydraulics. Engine one, start. Engine one pressurizes the green hydraulic system, providing normal braking. Engine one selector, ignition. No amber crosses. And uh, bleed air now on the left side. Engine one, master switch, on. Now, by the way, on some aircraft, um, let me just check here. I know there is a customization of the aircraft. Okay, so this is important. Yellow hydraulic steering, because on some older aircraft, the nose wheel steering is on the green hydraulics. So for this uh, video, we'll set nose wheel steering on the yellow hydraulics. But even then, it doesn't really, uh, the procedures don't change. You still turn on the yellow elec pump. Anyway, we'll uh, discuss this once we've started uh, the aircraft. All right, so yeah, engine one is available. Cross bleed open. Open the crossbeam valve in order to supply both packs uh, with engine one. Apply the after start normal procedure, but keep the APU running. Switch to APU bleed off. 
APU generator provides power to the engine fire extinguisher, prevents electrical transients, and enables yellowing IFE operation. Closing the APU bleed prevents engine exhaust gases ingestion in the air conditioning system. Delay the EKIM status check and the wing NTI setting until all engines are started. So before releasing the parving brake, you would go uh, yellow electric pump uh, on. And then apply the taxi normal procedure, but delay the flight controls check and arm the uh, auto brake after the flight controls check. So you do everything as normal. So engine mode selector norm, uh, we've done the APU bleed off, APU on. Pilot monitoring will arm the ground spoilers, reset rudder trim, we'll set the flaps, we'll set the trim as well. And we delay the ECAM uh, status check and the wing anti ice as well. So from here, uh, our plan uh, when starting the second engine before takeoff, engine warm up time before takeoff, consider the second engine must be started soon enough before takeoff in order to take into account the engine start time and the ensured applicable engine warm up time. So in this case, depending on, uh, I guess, the company, it's either two minutes or three minutes uh, warm up for the engine. So uh, also, it's important that you do this on a straightaway. On a straightaway so uh, we'll find out why once we start moving let's do that now so clear left side clear right side and we'll do a uh, runway turn off and taxi lights on parking brake off here we go so of course you will need to put a bit of power maximum 40 percent Once it starts moving, maybe you can uh, drop it down to about 35 or 30, depending uh, how much thrust the aircraft needs to get moving. You'd also do your brakes check once you uh, start moving. Again, we will not do the flight controls check yet. All right, we don't want to strain uh, hydraulics here. Brakes check. Okay, pressure zero. So just for the purpose of this uh, video, once we get on this right away immediately, let's start the engine. And anyway, that's also a good, uh, uh, it's also uh, pretty good that you'd start the engine on the straightaway immediately rather than you know misanticipate your two or three minutes by the time you get to the uh, runway the engine hasn't had enough time to uh, to warm up but it's up to you it's your discretion when you want to start the second engine just give it a two minute or three minute warm-up time okay so here we go we'll maintain this thrust 35 we'll just taxi slow and we'll continue with the procedure Okay, for engine to start and when taxiing in a straight line, during the engine start, a slight jerk forward may occur if the brakes are applied while the aircraft is moving. Maintain taxi in a straight line during at least the five seconds after the selection of engine to master lever to on to ensure that the PTU auto test is completed. So here we go. Uh, usually the pilot flying will not take part in any of this. The pilot flying will focus on taxiing the aircraft. So what we're going to do is what the pilot monitoring uh, will do, usually in uh, certain companies. So here we go. Yellow electric pump, off. It must be set to off to enable PTU automatic test during engine to start. APU bleed, on. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. After 10 seconds, 4, 5, 6, seven eight nine ten engine two start engine mode selector ignition no amber crosses bleeder right side engine two master switch on so there we go so we're maintaining taxi in a straight line so after APU bleed on, we 10 seconds into two start. We wait 10 seconds before the engine two start to ensure that the bleed system valves are not in transit. That will prevent the engine one from stalling.
So as a habit, I would also like to start the timer for two or three minutes to ensure that the aircraft has had enough time to warm up. Maybe three minutes. There we go, three minutes. Okay, APU as required. So in this case, uh, APU bleed off, APU master off, cross bleed auto. Apply the after start normal procedure, including the ECAM status check. So we've done everything. Uh, ECAM status uh, checked. Selection of engine two anti-ice and wing anti-ice as required. And then complete the after start checklist. That's assumed done. Flight control check. Uh, See, engine most selector norm as well. So engine most so full up, full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral rudder. There's no uh, disconnect here, so we'll be swerving a bit. Full left, full right, neutral. And then the pilot monitoring will do theirs. And then you do the taxi flow, which also includes the auto brake to max. Okay, so that's the one engine taxi on departure. Next, we'll do the arrival. Let me just set up the aircraft a bit so that we're going back. Okay, so for one engine taxi on arrival, it's very straightforward. You do need to wait three minutes after high thrust operations. So that means thrust idle to avoid engine shock cooling. So that means after max reverse and you've uh, done forward idle, you start the timer. Or if uh, on the flare you're only using reverse idle which is not considered as high thrust then yeah it does start there we need this to avoid engine shock cooling um, if operationally feasible to prolong engine life and reduce wear and tear again consider the factors we discussed a while ago for uh, one engine taxi on departure when doing one engine taxi on arrival so uh, very straightforward let's go ahead and get started are we waiting for three minutes yeah, it's 10 seconds to three minutes that's very good so again guys do not uh, uh don't mind the uh ecam ammo of uh, takeoff again this is uh, uh we just turn around from one engine taxi on departure this is only just to show you um the procedure so it's three minutes already the first thing you do is start the apu so why would we start the apu uh, before we shut down one engine to provide power to the engine fire extinguisher so in case you know the uh, uh, the remaining engine uh, goes on fire, to avoid electrical transients and enable galley and IFE operation. After high thrust operations, engine and minimum cooling time consider. That's what I said about the three minutes. It's already past three minutes when the APU indicates a veil and taxiing in a straight line. Uh, note during engine shutdown, a slight jerk forward may occur if the brakes are applied while the aircraft is moving. Uh, engine two shut down so again uh, let's wait until the APU indicates a veil okay uh, APU is a veil engine 2 shut down yellow elect pump on so it pressurizes yellow hydraulics and it avoids running the PTU. Okay, less wear and tear. We can go ahead and let's assume that there's a parking spot here. All right, so let's assume there's a parking spot here. Let's turn off the uh, turn off and nose lights. We'll be coming in. Your, your right side, the left side. So again, you might need to play with your thrust. Yeah, I think something's wrong with the flight simulator again. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Okay, first leave one idle. And let's stop here. Parking brake on. Yo, elect pump 
off. We also turn on AP bleed now and engine one shut down. We then stop the uh, timer as well. All right, guys. So that's uh, the video. So again, just to recap, we discussed plenty of uh, supplementary procedures regarding the engine, which is engine start with an air start unit or external pneumatic power, cross lead engine start, manual engine start, one engine taxi on departure and on arrival. And guys, I hope you learned something from this video and hopefully this will uh, make you enjoy your simulator experience more by providing a more realistic experience uh, with these procedures. Again guys, my name is Sky Blue, aka Drew. Until the next instructional video or stream, see ya!